I am doing the access course, uh, UK. And on my third day, I did quite bad because I was extremely rainy and windy. Any advice on how to get my confidence back? So Monica, you right there, you, you figured out that the reason why you did bad was because of rain and wind. So what is it that was the problem that, that you felt like you didn't have enough traction? So you're scared to accelerate. You're scared to brake a little bit harder. The wind was pushing you to the sides. Go ahead and expand on that. Cause I would love to hear more cause I, I can give some more information. The confidence thing, that right there with the with rain. Let's go ahead and let's, let's, let's pick it apart. Okay, let's make the make a big problem something smaller. So the rain. So with rain, you have visibility problems. So if I got water on these glasses, you'd have all these spots. Uh, you also have loss of traction. Maybe it's a little cold. Maybe you're getting wet. It's just, it's not the ideal situation. So the confidence starts to tank a little bit because you're obviously trying to learn, right? You're doing the access course. So it's your third day. So maybe it's your third day writing. I don't know too much about that. Maybe you're getting to a position of this is just way too new for me. So here's the thing. Tires, motorcycle tires can handle rain. They trust your tires when it comes to rain. Trust them. Okay. As long as they're warmed up, you have the proper PSI in them that they have good tread still. They will displace that water and grab that road. They will have that mechanical traction like you need. So when you are riding, trust that. So don't worry about, Hey, I got to I, I can't brake very quick. I can't accelerate very quick. You still can just remember it's progressive brake pressure and progressive throttle too. Don't just go like this. Nice and easy, nice, smooth shift and everything. And also squeeze, 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 squeeze. The wind, if it's pushing you from side to side, just realize maybe you have to just lean a little bit more. So if the wind's pushing you from this way, it's going this way, you maybe you just have to lean a little bit like this. And that's all it takes. Okay. It might, it's scary because it's going to constantly do this to you, but just realize that you do have traction on those tires. Am I overthinking my first ride on public roads? No. Lapidus, hopefully I said that right. No, you, you're not overthinking. You should have concern. You should be thinking about your first ride on the roads. Are you talking about the first ride? Okay, so public roads, are you talking about like with traffic? Is that what you're concerned about? Or have you only done parking lot, maybe the MSF course? Because if that's the case, go ahead and take your, uh, your bike in a neighborhood to where there's minimal traffic and the max speed is roughly 25 miles per hour. And the only real hazards you have to watch out are when it's time of day. So if it's like right after school and the kids are out playing, having a good time, riding bikes, kicking balls in the in the street, that's what those are the concerns you should have. But if it's during school hours, during work hours, there should be minimal traffic in neighborhoods, correct? So go ahead and practice 20 miles an hour. Everyone anticipates people going slow in neighborhoods. So practice your turning, practice uh, every driveway is an intersection. So you should be in orange stage when you see a vehicle, the side of the vehicle, all those different things should be worried about. And I, and I know I'm going to get back to, I, I, I expand on very little information that I have. I'm going to be going to school on my bike and I've been thinking about what gear I should get. Oh, that's a great question. So, uh, I, Alex, uh, I'm going to be riding a motorcycle basically to school. So when you get to school, you obviously can't carry and wear full gear all day, every day. So what you should do is get over pants, obviously a jacket, helmet, gloves, boots. Okay. So maybe find some boots that are comfortable to wear while walking. That's going to be kind of difficult with motorcycle boots, but over pants, uh, you, it has motorcycle protection, but you can wear clothes underneath jacket, obviously underneath the helmet. You're probably gonna have to carry around or get a helmet lock the gloves, put them in your backpack. If you have, I mean, with the boots, that might be a problem. That's the only thing I can't think of how you're going to carry that with you when you're riding around school, but find over pants, motorcycle over pants. I own and ride a pit bike off road. Then does that mean that I already have my first motorcycle? I'm fine to go for 700, 900 CC adventure bikes. Erop whispered um you might have the fundamentals just just be aware that you you're going from a pit bike to a very large adventure bike so ride within your ability you're riding within your ability on the pit bike now just understand that this new 700 to 900 cc adventure bike has much more power much more everything so you have to be very careful with that so don't just assume i can go from pit bike to adventure bike boom everything's good realize their throttle response is different the braking is going to be way different but you have the fundamental skills of understanding what it is you have to do so that's you should be good you should be good just realize Take it easy the first few times. When getting a motorcycle lessons, my instructor noticed a lot of newbies hold on tight to the motorcycle with windy days. He told us to sit like a bag of potatoes to make it easier. What's your opinion? I agree. Uh, what he's saying is you're holding on tight with the hands. So if you're holding on tight with the hands, see what I'm doing? It's shaking. What do you think it's doing to the handlebars? Exactly. So if you relax the upper body and you're just gripping the tank with your legs and your upper body from your hips up is loose, but still, still holding on just a little bit looser, you're going to do a lot better. It's going to remove a lot of the negative inputs into the bike. 
So think about it as like, you know, riding a bucking bronco or one of those, you know, uh, at a rodeo, those, uh, the bulls and everything. You're, you're keeping your upper body nice and loose and you're gripping with the tank. Another thing you can do is if you have side winds coming, let's say from this side, stick that knee out like it's a, a wing and it's going to, it's going to help you stay. It's going to help you stay up. I have a video on that. It's very hard to show right now while I'm sitting in the office. With the new laws now, everyone in Mexico City now has to pass a riding test in order to get the motorcycle license. That's good, right? Every rider is protesting against the law. Yeah, a lot of riders a lot of riders will protest against the law. A lot of riders protest against like helmet laws and stuff like that because of freedoms. Uh, they don't like the government doing these things. But here's the thing is that I believe in more, Amadeus, I believe more in education than restrictions. If there's a failure in educating the public, you have to have restrictions in order to save lives. While you have that restriction, there should be in place massive amounts of education so you can remove that restriction. But people aren't taking it seriously and people are dying all the time. So, I mean, I, a test, I mean, take a test. Like you should have to take a test. I uh, read a lot about saving money on first bike by buying used or not Craigslist, but I have no rider friends. So I can't tell if I'm getting, uh, thinking of buying new, your thoughts, Josh, uh, when you buy from a dealer, whether it's new or used, uh, it's going to be certified if you have a good dealer. So it's certified the mechanic, the head mechanic, all those people at the dealership looked it over, made sure it's roadworthy. If there was damage, they repaired it. And you might pay a little bit more than you would private party, but you know, for a fact that a mechanic made it sound. And you could possibly get a warranty on that. So uh, I would possibly look at dealerships. Uh, if you're going to do it on Craigslist, uh, Fortnite has an amazing video, probably one of the better ones when it comes to what to look for in a used bike. Check them out. Just type in Fortnite buying a used bike. And you should be able to find that video. He answers it way better than I possibly could. Um, if you don't have any friends, there's, there's many ways of doing it. He says it in the video how to do it. You, you possibly take it to a mechanic and they look it over before you buy it. My question is from Andre, should I get for the beginning the GZ250 and ride it for the first year or should I get the VZ800 and grow with it? All right, so that's that's like a financial question really because you feel like you could maybe take, and I'm and I'm projecting here, maybe just get one bike, one and done, but then slowly grow into it. That way you don't have to buy two bikes or should I be safe and buy the GZ250 and learn all I can then have to deal with the process of selling it and then buying the VZ, like all those things. So here's my thing. I started, and I can only give you the advice that I took myself. I went and I bought a 1200. I bought the Harley, a brand new Harley 1200. I taught myself in a parking lot, but I also had training from uh, riding or driving a truck that was manual. So I knew the clutch, I knew the gears, I knew when the RPM ranges, I knew the whole purpose of doing those things. So I knew all that. If you are comfortable and understand clutch and understand all those things, you can grow with the VZ800. You absolutely can, but just realize this. With an 800cc, whatever it is, sport bike, cruise, or whatever, that's going to have more power than a 250. So you're going to have more throttle response. Hopefully you have more braking power. You know, it has better brake. It's going to be a heavier bike. It's going to be a bigger bike. So realize that. So don't be like, well, I'm going to utilize all 800ccs within the first year. Okay. Grow into it. You might be a quick learner. You probably could, but the thing is grow into it. So take it to a parking lot, take it into neighborhoods, start slow, start small in terms of where you're going to take it, you know, reduce as many factors, risk management. So if you take it to a parking lot, there's no cars driving around, right? So risk management, you removed a factor of possible vehicles hitting you. So now you can practice slow speed. You remove the factor of high speed. Now take it off into a neighborhood max 25 miles an hour where I'm at. So you're not going to go faster than 25. Is there massive amounts of traffic in the neighborhood? Possibly, but pick the time of day to where people are at work. Kids are in school. It's a neighborhood that maybe has no houses yet. So it's still in development. So now you're going around in, a, in an open neighborhood, great vision, no houses yet. And you're practicing your turns, your 90 degree turns. You're practicing your stops at the stop signs. You're practicing your U-turns in, in cul-de-sacs or you're practicing U-turns with however wide that road is and take your time, take your time. Do that whether you're driving the 250 or the 800. When it comes to the financial part, what do you do? I personally, I would get the 800. And it's all based on the fact that I know what it is I can do, what I can do. You go to the gym and you have 600 pounds of weights and your bench press in the, in the bench. Are you loading all 600 at first? No. 
you have the capability of all 600 pounds, but you're going to load up maybe the bar because you've never done it before. So you're going to try it out. So that's like first gear, nice and easy in a parking lot. You're like, oh, I'm pretty strong. I can go, I, I could do more. Let's put 45s on. Boom. You went into a neighborhood. Well, I'm going to, this is kind of tough. I'm going to practice here for a while. I'm going to train here for a while. And then all of a sudden you're at 225 and it's okay. Let's go to the, let's go on public roads, but let's not go crazy. Let's not go in the mountains and do twisties. All right. Now I've practiced public roads. All right, let's go to the mountains and try it nice and easy. Now let's try it. You see what I mean? Progressive overload in your training is very important. 